So it starts out, uh, I was going to talk about designing, I mean history, the, interpreting history, but instead I'm talking about the design process. But actually even more instead, it's uh, disaster through redemption to exciting life changing. And I think that's better. And if you've only got uh, 15 minutes, that's, uh, that's a good journey. So here I am in New York, uh, you know, uh, okay, top of my field, hip hip hooray, uh, 60 something years old at the time of this uh, traumatic experience, uh, full of it. This was the hubris, uh, I was hubris incarnate. Do you know what hubris means? Mm-hmm, that was me. And uh, pompous, I was too successful, I was coasting on my uh, design successes, and uh, as happens in Greek drama, uh, you, the gods come down and zap you. And what happened was, and, and I had so much hubris that I, assumed, that I thought that uh, 2008, I had created the, the collapse. <laughs> You know, this is ultimate hubris. And that I was totally responsible for my, you know, no one investing in Broadway shows. Everyone was bringing uh, shows in from Des Moines, Reach, uh, Mary Masker's tent. They were bringing them with their costumes and their set and their actors. They were bringing them in, so there was no, very little work. Actually, of the shows that were happening uh, after uh, the crash, we call it still, uh, only about a third were being made in New York, so, but I didn't realize this. I just thought, oh, I had created this because I was so pompous and so confident. And uh, let me tell you what I do. When you make costumes, this is helping people become somebody else. It's helping uh, actors interpret their characters uh, so that they can tell this story. It really is story-driven. It's uh, all about the dramaturgy. I work for a director. I'm a support group. I'm hiding in the basement painting the shoes, okay? So it's this exciting, uh, my father, oh, well, we were farmers in uh, Seaboard. My father was the 13th child, and uh, there happened, and he was going to become a farmer also. And uh, the Seaboard town fathers and mothers, uh, but it was more chauvinist back then, so it was town fathers. Uh, on the school board, decided they were going to teach uh, playwriting. And Bernice Kelly Harris was hired. She was a, a North Carolina novelist from Wake County. And uh, my father was her first playwriting student. So from planting cotton and peanuts on the horizon, it was playwriting. And he got the first playwriting scholarship to Chapel Hill, Carolina Playmakers. And the rest is history. But we're still farmers, and that is what saved me. But let me go even deeper into my mud. So I was so arrogant, I was, I was uh, the producers and was running strong in Hairspray, and uh, mm -hmm. I was excited about it, but somehow the process of making theater, it was, it was curdling in my, I was on a terrible journey here, a uh, personal journey, I was too confident. So I was down in Seaboard, and my agent called and said, someone wants you to uh, come to a reading, they've got this new play, and they've never worked on Broadway before, so they need all this help, and they write for South Park, and uh, they've got this uh, crazy project called uh, The Book of Mormon, and I said, no, I'm going to stay here, I'm having too much fun working in the, you know, back 40, as it were, and so William didn't go to the reading of The Book of Mormon, so I didn't get The Book of Mormon, and this is sort of, it all hit the fan to, in my life right then, and then people stopped calling. I've been doing four musicals a year. I've, I've just opened, uh, Thursday night opened uh, Cabaret again, which is the 66th uh, musical uh, Broadway show. And so anyway, uh, I was down to doing one show a year. I know, poor me, right? This is for, for the youngsters, you think that's very, uh, but when you're cooking, you know, you've got a lot of mouths to feed and I've got a company to run and it was just all collapsing. And I also was, oh, this is even more pathetic. I was the grand, this, well, part and parcel. I was grand marshal of a Christmas parade in Manio, North Carolina. You know where that is, Outer Banks? Because uh, I worked at the Lost Colony. Jackman. And, uh, Andy Griffith was driving me, because he and my mother were in the same class at Chapel Hill. We knew him forever. And I jumped off the back of the car that he was driving, said, Billy, jump off and say something. So Billy did, and I fused vertebras because I was 210 back then. And I said, okay, that, that and the Book of Mormon. And I said, okay, I've got it. Something's got to change. So I 
lost 50 pounds, changed my life. I started, because remember the work had dried up. I started doing everything volunteer I possibly could. I worked uh, doing shows for, for free, meeting people. I would buy tickets to everybody's benefit because I thought if they see my face, maybe they'll hire me. I mean, where did this come from? <laughs> you know, this face. And uh, <laughs> the point is I had to hit the bottom, the work bottom. And those of you all who are my age, maybe you understand uh, the youngsters snipping at your heels uh, for half the price with twice the talent. And don't think I don't know it. They do have twice the talent. And I was just totally panicked. So what did I do? As I said, I started working for free. I started doing tons of shows. I sold my house. Uh, I had a lovely brownstone in, in uh, Chelsea, and which I had bought when it was you know, gutted and terrible, and I'd spent all these years fixing it, and a lot of it we all did by hand. And so I sold that to the, my next door neighbor so she could open a museum of, of combining the two houses. That was a good deed. And I bought this, um, the bottom two floors of a button factory. I thought, button factory, that's good. I'm in <laughs> button land. And uh, it's two whole floors. Um, the top floor is the big studio, and the downstairs is the basement. I was so panicked that I would never work again. I sleep to this day on an air mattress right next to my drafting table. I uh, have, st I totally changed the way I design. I am... Uh, I've, I've, I've uh, in, been asked to be involved with a, a volunteer day job called the American Theater Wing, which uh, produces the Tonys. So I, I go to meetings and meetings all for free, all this energy, trying to put out good energy. And um, so what happened is I started thinking, well, how am I going to get my excitement back? How am I going to want to design again? What is design? Where does creativity come from? How dare I even think? I have creativity, how dare I, because you know, all the stuff that you mentioned, uh, that's then. And I'm sitting right there going, okay, I don't have any shows. I have volunteer work. I bought this, you know, sold the brownstone, had enough money to uh, buy this loft, two floors, and I'm starting over. And I thought, okay, how, well, I didn't know, I just experimented. I said, um, why don't we... So anyway, I started getting the shows, and I was repairing, getting ready to start building the, building out this this uh, this loft. And I, I said, well, I got some of these, um, you know, those what are they? They're four by eight, four by eight um, um, insulation, boards. insulation boards. And I painted them white, and I started putting up my reference pictures, and I put them all around the room, and I started, I just instinctually, I this, you you compute. I'm looking more kids over here. You know about drop boxes and put, dropping in uh, photos and pictures and everything. So I started printing out all the, surrounding myself with references. I lived in a cocoon. Now mind you, I'm sleeping right over there. And I started, and here's sort of the picture, like this, see? And that is uh, some sort of, uh, yeah. This is the references for Bullets Over Broadway. So I started surrounding myself. So I had 25 of these all the way around the room. Now, mind you, I don't think I know how to design anymore. I've totally lost confidence. I've totally just messed up, okay? This is uh, references for Cinderella. For some reason, this is now in color. Well, Cinderella has color. Okay, so look at all these um, horses. And over there, you see we're coming to butterflies. There we go. When I was in graduate school at Chapel Hill, uh, Schnorenberg, Dr. Schnorenberg, uh, made up these little booklets that sort of flash booklets and you look at pictures and he taught us what he said and it, therefore I was taught, you know, they don't just teach, they give you hints. And he says, every day you have to look through this book. You have to start learning about line, uh, color, um, composition, and every day I want you to look through this book. They're 250 pages and really spend the time looking. So that popped in my brain. I said, if I surround myself with design, with images that are going to influence the creation of forest creatures, uh, nature, uh, butterflies and birds, and that was the Cinderella magical, the beginning, the jumping off for the magical Cinderella land. What do I have here? Oh, here I am. And I thought, okay, no net. Who, who here does the uh, puzzle, the New York, uh, the uh, crossword puzzle in ink. Anybody do that? Oh, lots of smarties. 
Well, so now I started drawing in ink. That's it. No pre-sketching, no light box, and it's with a dropper. So all my sketches since this day is, are in ink. So there's no going back. You either can do it or you can't. And I thought, I need some pressure. I need to put this extra pressure on me. I need to wipe away the confidence, and I have to restart again. Okay, where are we now? Oh, oh, go back, go back, go back. <laughs> this is what I've discovered, and it's going to fit right into my unit. I'm a Virgo. You know what, Vir anybody Virgo here? That's who makes lists that are in your little pocket, just saying. Uh, so this is the secret. This is how it all came back. Living in your workspace, surrounding yourself with references. You have to accept the fact that you know nothing and you're only there to channel design choices after meeting with the director and the playwright and the actors and the choreographer. And I am there to absorb as much as possible. I totally changed the way I designed. I now, my dream date is to go to bed at nine o'clock and get up at five. Now that sounds like a farmer to me. So this is, the, so I went right back to the basic DNA channeling. It worked for them. Uh, and I can put a, a design thought in my brain. I, if I start a, an hour, like at eight, or, well, I don't always get to go to bed at nine. But if I put a design uh, thought, a little capsule in my brain of thinking, a process, I've got to solve this problem. I can tell you it's amazing. Nine times out of ten, by five o'clock, I wake up and with the solution. It just is going in there because what is design anyway? It's putting line and shape and ideas and mixing them up. So I guess I'm letting my subconscious do the work for me. And I wake up and I run over and I do a sketch. Sometimes I do it in the middle of the night on a yellow legal pad right next to the, to the bed. And always I come up with something like this. So mostly it doesn't work. Uh, this one didn't work, but this one did. I know, it's hard to explain, but I've got an example. And I draw this in the middle of the morning. Mad Marie, this is me doing this in the morning. Okay, next. Oh, and another thing. So Mad Marie is the fairy godmother who's masquerading as Mad Marie, this crazy lady in the forest. And I thought, okay, I'm going to start with wood creatures and wood symbols and grains. And I dyed my paper. On the, see the gra wood grain on the back of the paper? Go to the next one. There we go, see? And I started discovering her in there and the butterfly wings and then she's got these things and, and horns and it all came from, I thought if I put all this stuff in front of my face, then something will happen. Totally no confidence in my design ability ever again. I just started putting the requirements in front of my steps. Okay, next. Oh, and then there's Victoria Clark from Raleigh. North Carolina. Here she is, and these are the first uh, mock-ups of her crazy... And here she is with Cinderella. And now we have a little video. No, we're gonna do the fairy godmother. Oh, we're going to do the fairy godmother first. Oh, then she flies. Okay. All this is with ink, and all this is from being influenced by the butterflies and the images of the, of the forest. There were fitting... Oh, yeah, substructure that... Well, you'll see, they pop up. Okay. There she is on stage. Keep going. Oh, and here's a little video we're going to show you. Wait a minute, stop, turn it down. Stop. So this is Cinderella, and they both transform. This is on the Tony Awards. It's sort of a low-tech somebody handheld. And uh, the fair, it's really about Cinderella, although I've, we've done the journey of uh, Mad Marie. Victoria got all nervous because it's only in front of a billion people, we, we wish. Uh, only a few million. Um, and she forgot to pull the thing that popped her thing up. She transformed, but she didn't pop up. You'll see she does halfway through. But uh, so Cinderella, I had to wake up very early and week after week trying to figure out how to make that transformation. Okay, go. But in order to do that, you'd have to be a fairy godmother. And now here she is throwing this off. <laughs> now this is supposed to pop up. She got so nervous it didn't. But, but you're going to see this happen. Woman, what are you doing in that beautiful gown? You'd be surprised how many beautiful gowns have crazy women in them. <laughs> this is the sort of shows I do, okay? And now, dear Emma, it's time to make all your dreams come true. The impossible. Ah, 
So what happens next? 5 a.m. 5 a.m. All came to me, percolating in my brain, out of fear. Go, can you do that again? Can you do that again? Okay. So. So the good news is. Okay, we'll see one more time. So the good news is, you can redeem yourself if you just calm down. She didn't pop up. Oh, doing here's the joke gown. again. You'd be surprised how many beautiful gowns have crazy women in them. It's one of those one-shot laughs. It's time to make all your dreams come true. The impossible. So it has to impossible. pop up, impossible. drop down. She changes impossible. her shape. You'll see all in 15 seconds. Impossible. Or not even 15. Let's see. Six, seven. Seven seconds. Okay, thank you. So, so, that could only happen, I swear to myself, by my having totally lost all confidence, dropped to the bottom of my, of my essence, and built back up again. And so, I thank my farm <laughs> DNA with you're dealing with the elements, you're dealing with nature, you're dealing with the Lord above, and something's gonna happen if you just let yourself go with it. And I did.